Mix it with my boot camp tip, creating focus and depth with compression. In a prior video, we went over with this song the process of creating definition with EQ. The idea being that if you push into important frequencies within any individual instrument, bass, kick drum, snare, whatever, and you find a focus point for the low end, a focus point for the attack frequency, push into it sometimes with extreme values, right? Some of the equalization that we did on things like the kick drum here were plus 10, plus 12 dB, but also with some aggressive subtractive equalization and an output gain that balances out the overall level. What we can do when we push in with some extreme settings like this is that we can really define instruments into particular tonal layers and clear out all of the mud. And so just to show you a quick example as a reminder, this is what we were like flat, and then I'll put it in midway through the chorus just so you can hear uh, with the equalization in. So this first layer up on the top is only the API equalization. You're trying, you love me, thinking that you could leave me, buzzing all the lies that you tell. The one who you tease and cheat me, bad like me, don't believe the lies that you tell. So what we found there is obviously there's a lot of clarity, a lot of openness. It sounds a lot louder too, but a lot of that is not not as much uh volume as it is just clarity and focus obviously when you bring in more high frequencies we're more sensitive so a lot of the volume is coming from that now when we bring on a layer of compression on top of this and this is sort of this thing that is sometimes frowned upon which is putting the compression after the eq now part of the process of putting compression after the eq which is the secondary layer here so in this second layer i have compression added in. In the previous layer, I have all of the compressors turned off on all of the channels. So here you see on the kick drum, I have this added in. The idea of putting it after these heavy boosts is that now that we've defined the important aspects of the sound, we've pushed into them heavily, now the compression will be more responsive because it will respond to the frequencies that you really want. Whereas if you compress with the sound, it needs a lot of tonal balancing and work, what you're doing is you're kind of gluing the muddiness and the part of the sound that you don't like into the sound. It's making it more dense, which is a byproduct of what compression does. When you push in the frequencies that you do want to keep, now the compression is going to respond and glue together the sound based on the frequency content you're pushing in, particularly high frequencies, but also low frequencies. If you push low in into the bass, it will help to make the the compression kind of wrap around it a little bit more and kind of glue together to the low end in relationship to the other frequencies that make up the sound. All right, so if it sounds a little confusing, the next best thing to do is to go through an audio example. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna play the chorus down first with just the equalization and I'm gonna bypass everything and bring in the equalization with compression after. Okay, so let's start by uh, just focusing it now. What I want you to focus on here, and this is important, is that with the equalization, obviously you have the clarity, but with the clarity, and now you can hear the individual elements of the mix, it still doesn't quite have the depth feel that we want. So if you really pay attention and listen to it, you won't hear this real stretch of depth. You'll hear more of this vertical separation where the size up and down in the mix seems to stretch, right? And maybe come a little bit forward, but the depth field doesn't quite open up. So let's just pay attention to that because that's going to be the important transformation that you're going to hear when we get to the compression. So here we go. You're trying, you love me, thinking that you could leave me, losing all the lies that you tell. The one who you tease and cheat me, bad like me, don't believe the lies that you tell. Okay. So now I'm going to bypass this. And now we're going to listen to it with the compression and just notice how this changes or shifts with the depth field kind of opening up. You're trying, you lose me, thinking that you could leave me, losing all the lies that you tell. The one who you tease and cheat me, bad like me, don't believe the lies that you tell. 
Okay, so now that may have not been very obvious, right? It seems subtle. So in this next playback, I'm going to go back and forth between the two as quickly as I can, because I do have to, you know, it does take a second for it to transition over. But I want you to really pay attention to a couple of things here. The depth field will show up in different areas. The instruments that I want to pull forward, like the vocal, will come more forward. Those elements that I want to say a little bit more glued to in between the speakers, right behind the vocal, like the drums and percussion, the bass, things like that, will stabilize there. And then some of the other layers, like some of the keyboard bell sounds and little things that are trinkling off in the background, will feel like they're a little bit more off behind the instruments in the mix. So... That's what I want you to focus on here and just pay attention as I play this down. So I'm going to start with the equalization in first and then I'm going to go back and forth between uh, the two setups here. You're trying, you love me, thinking that you could live me. Okay, so what you can hear, and, and I'm very purposely trying to get you to focus on this, because if you have a difficult time hearing it, it's worth playing this back, even just this section, this last minute or so that I played through chorus, verse, B section, and another chorus, just to notice that difference and really focus on it. Because this is really the power of compression. The idea of this and putting a layer of compression on is that I'm primarily picking three zones that I want to work with my compression in. There are certain elements of the mix I want to sit kind of in the middle of the speaker, some that I want to draw out forward in front of the speaker, and some that I want to reside behind the speaker. And the way that the settings generally work for this type of thing, and this is a very general thing because you have to make adjustments, right, according to the individual sounds, right? But if you want to have something out front, it generally requires a slower attack time and a faster release. The faster release being the most key thing because it will generate the movement. So for example, if I go over here to the vocal track and I take a look at the vocal compression settings, you could see here I have a very fast release and actually kind of a medium attack because that's what I found uh, to work well. So for example, if I took this vocal and I switched the attack time to 30 milliseconds, I might be able to even draw the vocal out more forward in the mix. Oh, wait a minute, this is the one without compression. Aha, uh -huh. let me go back. There we go. Okay, here. Oh, I did do 30 milliseconds, right? And a fast release time, right? 50 milliseconds. You're trying, you love me, thinking that you could live me. Right, so that movement helps to create, draw your attention to the articulation and the vocal. We talked about this in other videos, right, with the compression. Um, for other elements, for example, like with the drums, I'm going to focus on something that kind of stabilizes them into a middle section of the speaker. So what I'm looking for is sort of a medium, you know, a uh, fast to medium-ish attack and a medium release. So here the medium release time is somewhere like just under 300 milliseconds. This happens to be a musical value. I'll get to that in some other videos on functional compression. And 
uh, the attack time is kind of a medium-ish attack time, like three, you know, three to ten is kind of in that kind of medium range. Start pushing up towards thirty, that's obviously slow. Uh, fast attack times are, you know, less than three towards one um, millisecond or so, and I'll get into that in a second. But that medium attack, medium release, sort of keeps things moving in the center, right? Important to maintain the groove. You want that pulse, right, to kind of move with the tempo of the song in the center, but it maintains a position right there. Less movement than the sounds that are up front. The things I want to go in back are going to have a fast attack time and a longer release time. And sometimes different forms of compression, like the broadcast limiters, LA-2As, LA-3As, uh, Fairchild's, uh, 2254 Neve compressors, those are sort of the vintage broadcasts. Those do an amazing job of stabilizing things in the back position. So if we have something that is a pad, what we'll have is something that will, you know, in this case I used like a, um, a FET compressor, right? And, and so this will have a very fast attack and I have the release time set to 2.5 seconds. So I have a long release time. So the you, the compression response holds on to the sound, kind of glues it, and the gain is sort of maintained. So there's less movement within naturally within the sound with the gain reduction holding on to everything. Those three areas, those three layers or three levels of the mix are, are important. And deciding which instruments belong in those different zones is important. And, you know, it's not a perfect formula you could take something like that, that pad with the fast attack and the long release time, and if you raise the volume of it very loud, it will pull out in front of the mix. So the volume has to sort of match. The important thing here is the combination of the EQ, which creates the definition. So the sounds have a very defined tonal range vertically, right? The frequencies vertically low below the speakers, high frequencies above the speakers, and everything in between, right? So you get a little bit of that stretching or increasing the size of the mix, and the compression adds the depth. So responding to the definition that you created, it now brings things more into focus. Compression, when working well, will actually take the sound and make it kind of morph into a position, or you'll feel like the definition or focus of the instrument form into a position in the mix that's clear. And when it does that, it makes clear all the space between it and the other elements of the mix. And if you just focus on this one aspect, just the clarity, focus on the space between all of the elements of the mix as I go back and forth between just the EQ version, which is here, EQ only, and then EQ and compression, which is the second version. Okay, so uh, just, just focus on that for a second, just the space between all the elements in the mix. You're trying, you lose me. So in that just simple example, and, and you could play that back just to, to get an idea, you could hear that the individual sounds, like it's almost like there's just clarity in between all the spacing of the instruments. That is so critical because when we get to the reverb stage and we get to the effects processing stage, that reverb and those effects have to exist in a space. And if the space between the instruments is not there, that's why you don't end up hearing the reverb. And that's yet another boot camp tip. All right, so I'm going to wrap it up here. Uh, creating focus and depth with compression. Uh, this is just one of the many things. It all works together, right? And so it's a, an important to have a strategy. One of the key things that I really teach in the boot camp, the primary focus of the boot camp, is really teaching you mixing strategies. So that when you set up a mix and you really organize all the tracks, you know what the role is of every track in the mix, you have a strategy for how to process each element, you could stay consistent with your processing steps. If I want to do something to keep something back in the mix, every layer of processing I put on that thing will achieve the effect of keeping it back in the mix. No guesswork. We're always working from a place of, uh, of you know, um, intention, and with specific target settings that you're going after to achieve the effect. And that's really what I teach here. So in addition to the uh, mix analysis of commercial songs, 
what you end up with is me breaking down those commercial songs, showing how those techniques are used in all of these mixes, and then the application of it and showing you in real-time application doing up and setting up and doing the mixes so you can watch me go through the process. If I come across any problems, I resolve them. All of that is in the boot camp, and uh, this is just one small sliver of what you'll find there. Check it out at mixingwithmike.com. And, uh, you know, have at it. Hope this helps and uh, uh, many more to come.